What's going on, people? We are Tottenham TV here, back here for the last match preview of the season. It is Leicester City against Tottenham Hotspur. Leicester needing a win, Tottenham needing a win. And, you know, do you want to run us through like what the state of play is in the league going into the last game of the season? Yeah, so Spurs currently need um, West Ham to lose to Southampton um, on the last end of the season. And Tottenham need to beat Leicester if we have any chance of going to the Europa League. That's the only chance we have of West Ham draw. We're finished. Um, if we don't beat Leicester, we're finished. So we, we need we need West Ham to lose and Tottenham to win. And for Leicester, they are currently four goals behind Liverpool in their goal difference for the race for the top four. They're currently in fifth. Liverpool are currently in fourth. Chelsea are currently in third, one point ahead. So Leicester need to beat us and hope either one of Chelsea or Liverpool uh, don't win their games to have any chance of uh, being in top four. Otherwise, they are going to be bottling it kind of for a second season in a row. Chelsea play Villa away Liverpool play Palace at home and obviously Leicester play us and that is the state of play so a lot to play for going into this game for both teams more to play for for Leicester because obviously being in the Champions League is a massive goal for them and they'll be very very disappointed if for a second season in a row they kind of fall out of the top four right at the last hurdle uh, last season they actually started the last day in the top four mm, yeah and lost to Chelsea on the last day which uh, stopped them getting top four and and this time they're just outside the top four and they're in the chasing pack and they need to hope uh, one of them drop points. A draw for Liverpool or for Chelsea is good enough for Leicester if they beat us. But and they need uh, they need to win, yeah. So, I mean, it's all kind of to play for last game of the season in, in terms of the top four. Um, us, I mean, the top highest we can finish is sixth. The lowest we can finish is ninth. Is that right? We can finish ninth. So, in terms of um, Arsenal play Brighton, Everton play Man City at the Etihad. And um, if we do, if we fail to beat Leicester and both Everton and Arsenal get wins, or even if Everton just draw and we... Um, Sorry, if Everton draw and we lose, they finish above us because yeah. uh, we're level on points with uh, yeah. Everton. We're yeah. one point ahead of Arsenal, which means if Arsenal fail to beat Brighton, we will be okay. However, if Arsenal win, we need we will need to win against Leicester to finish above them. Otherwise, Arsenal will be above us. So we could finish as low as ninth. Um, wow. We could we we could potentially, in theory, finish tenth, but our goal difference is so superior to Leeds that it's completely unlikely that's ever going to happen. So. Um, it looks, uh, it looks like at the moment going to this game, Arsenal. We are probably favourites to finish ninth going into this game. Not oh. ninth. I would say we're favourites to finish eighth, but Arsenal are favourites right now to be above us because if they win, which they are probably favourites at home to Brighton, although they haven't been Brighton at home for the last two years, they are probably favourites at home to Brighton. And obviously, we got Leicester away. If we draw and they win, they finish above us. Sorry, state of affairs. It really is. I mean, I can't believe we're going into the se uh, last game of the season. Potentially, we could finish ninth. Ninth. Mm -hmm. Unbelievable. And anyway, let's get into the game. Let's start talking about the game. Um, have, do you hold any hope that we can get any three points from this one? No. No. We, we, when was the last time we beat a team in the top half? Can't remember. Probably... Well, even when we beat Man City and Man United, they weren't in the top half, were they? Yeah, I mean, it's been so long. Even if that is the last time, that's like November time. So it's been so long since we beat a team with um, um, with a lot of quality. And especially with Leicester fighting on on uh, to get in that Champions League spot, I really don't see a situation where we get all three points in this one. I really mm. don't, especially as well. Uh, I know we're fighting for Europa, but Kane... Um, it could be his last day, but you know they they might have an eye on the Euros going into this one. You know, do they? Would he care more about the Euros and getting Europa League full for Tottenham? Probably. So um, I can't like I can't envisage Tottenham getting three points in this one because mm. to get three points, we need to fight tooth and nail for every single inch um, to make sure we get over the line in this one and and, and to, to to get three points. Leicester are going to be sharp for it. They're going to be fighting everything. It's going to be a very very aggressive match from them. So can I see Spurs matching their aggression? Match their fight I just can't I mm. simply cannot see it having said that I mean on the on the football pitch where are kind of Leicester's frailties where can we get out of them get at them uh, well, Johnny Evans obviously got injured in the cup final. So I think in terms of their frailties, I know they got Where's Fofana. Where's Morgan going to play? Um, probably not. I mean, they got Fofana, Sayonchu. It'll be Fofana and Sayonchu. Um, they got um, Pereira and Castagna and Justin. Not Justin. Um, 
Tom Luke, Luke Thomas as well because yeah. I think Justin is injured. So they have players there, but I do think obviously there are there are frailties in their backline. Sionchu hasn't had the be- the best of uh, seasons recently. Uh, I feel like he's uh, not kind of hit the heights he had last season. Fofana's obviously been a bit of a revelation. He's been great. Pereira hasn't been quite the same since he uh, came back from injury. Um, but then on the flip side, Castagna has been quite good. So depends who they go for but with with Evans injured they do kind of uh, lack a bit of organization leadership when he's not there although when he did go off they are obviously um, kind of got together and uh, got through that cup final even though he went off injured but the fact that they tried to play him while he was injured kind of showed to me that he's so vital to their back line they, they feel he's very important but look we're clutching at straws because because you know they really don't have many frailties you got in the center indeed and Tielemans two uh, and and or Chowdhury and Pratt uh, who are all very very, very physical players who are very, very difficult to deal with. What a goal and from Tielemans in the cup final, look, by Tielemans, the way. Tielemans combines technical ability um, with his passing and shooting and, and he's got good physicality as well. So he's a real threat on the ball. You've got Indeed who can who does the running for two players. I can see him definitely um, getting the better of Hoybia in this game. I really can because he just uh, right, he covers every single inch of the pitch. He, indeed. Uh, if I remember correctly, in the first game we played against him this season, they're just midfield completely overran completely. us, they? completely dominated and that, that the the only way we can kind of get the better of them is maybe we try and out football them if we get the likes of Ndombele and La Celso involved and try and out and out football them out pass them that's the only way I can see because I do think Ndombele and La Celso are better footballers than indeed and Tielemans just I think indeed, indeed and Tielemans have uh, more uh, physical attributes to them which make uh, uh, which uh, compensate for that and it uh, and it would make them basically superior in that way I think indeed is such a special player he's, he's um he's been unbelievable for them again this season uh, but then you can look at their strike force Jamie Vardy has been off form for a while but not but Iniacho exactly Iniacho is the one stepping up he's been I think since March he's been I think the top goal scorer in the league yeah. I think uh, or one of the top goal scorers in the league so he he's he's one who's definitely and, on and, form and obviously in their last game against Chelsea which they end up losing they started him on the bench and as soon as he came on they started to be a threat again exactly so um that and then Madison, who's just coming back from injury, he didn't have the best game against Chelsea. But um, they have other options there if they're not going to start him. They, he, he scored a brilliant goal at us at the Tottenham Stadium earlier in the season, didn't he? Uh, he did. I think I was ruled out there, wasn't it? Oh, wasn't that, that one, one I was ruled, ruled out? out. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're right. You're um, right. Uh, but he did it was a great goal, which was I think it was unfairly ruled out. If I remember, it was one of those dodgy offsides. Um, in place of him, they got Iosi Perez, who hasn't had the best season, so he's one obviously who maybe we can think um, he won't be the biggest threat. But there's not a, again. It's one of those teams where even though they've suffered a lot of injuries this season, you know Harvey Barnes being out for a while, Madison being out for a while, indeed even being out for a while, um, Evans being out for a while. They've just got on with it. They got yeah. on with the job. They've got uh, even though the players who are coming in like Mark Brighton uh, and 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 Dennis Pratt, people like that, maybe they're not the best, but they in they get input into a system. They they all know their role and they're very well coached. Uh, so they don't have an obvious weakness. And like you say about the injuries, and it's not just like in one part of the season. They've pretty much had injuries throughout the whole season, Correct. literally. Even at the beginning of the season when they were doing really well, you know, everyone's like, oh, yeah, uh, I don't know if they're going to last with these injuries. But look at them, man. They're like, I know they're fifth and they should be in the top four, but they still had a really good season by their standards. On the only thing I would say in, in, in our, in our favour is their home form is pretty bad. Yeah. Their home form isn't isn't uh, particularly good this season for uh, Leicester. That is that is pretty much the reason that uh, it's letting them down. To be honest, uh, that's if they are going to miss out on top four, it will be their home form. They recently lost to Newcastle, uh, and they have lost. They've had losses to uh, Man uh, Man City as well. They got knocked out by Slavia Prague at home as well. They lost to Leeds at home. They lost to Everton at home. They lost to West Ham at home. Villa at home. Uh, Arsenal at home. Let's let's not go through who we've lost to away from home. Yeah, true. Our away, <laughs> our away form has also been probably our biggest down form. Just, but I'm just saying, you know, their their biggest problem has been their home form. So they have they've had a lot of defeats um, at home. So that's the only thing that could maybe be our saving grace. But other than that, look, it's going to be so difficult. They, I, I think it's just going to be a matter of. Um, I think them working harder than us. I think so because they've done it all season. They've got well, hard workers all over the, the case pitch. In most of the games, we don't we drop points in this season, isn't it? Yeah, 
So That's I think it's going to be very difficult for us, in my opinion, to match them for aggression, for fight, and especially what and for motivation. I think it's going to be very difficult for us to match them for motivation. It's going to be interesting to see how, what kind of lineup Ryan Mason plays. We'll get into that in our predi- predicted lineup, but I, I don't see anything other than a Leicester win. And the only th- I maybe can hope for a point, but a point it might as well be a defeat in this game. Yeah, and you know, cast your mind back to what, like three years ago, uh, 2017, was that three years ago now? Um, at this stage of the season, we went to King Power 161. Yeah. That just seems like such a distant memory now, doesn't it? That ain't happening. That definitely ain't happening in this game. Um, the, the only way uh, we can win is if we have a turn up for the form books and just surprise everyone with the performance. But the way we've played against teams with a bit of quality, um, especially since January, doesn't hold me with any hope that we are going to get a win in this game. And I don't think the players have the sufficient motivation to get a win in this game. Mm. I don't think they're going to think, oh, if we win, we'll get you They haven't had it all season, mate. They haven't no, had they it should have had it. They should have had it against uh, Villa if that was the case. They didn't seem to have that. And um, they should have had it against Leeds if exactly. that was the case. Exactly. You know? You know? There are so many cases of this. It's actually a sickening job. Exactly. And even you hear Harry Kane in his... Um, uh, interview Gary Neville talking about uh, Mourinho maybe trusting the players too much in in a sense because he he's obviously talked a lot tactically and about how to get a uh, player how what, how to fit in the system on the pitch but when it comes to uh, you know doing the extra work in the gym and all that kind of stuff he left it to the players for their own motivation and clearly a lot of the players this season have been found wanting from that mm. respect and haven't had their own motivation that's been the biggest problem in the squad I feel throughout the season and I feel like in this game it will be another case of uh, us getting undone and unfortunately for me our, our best hope of ending the season above Arsenal is them not winning against Brighton and uh, there is a fair chance of that happening but I think that's the, what we have to rely on at this point we might as well watch the Arsenal game because I don't think we're going to win against Leicester yeah, I mean it really is a story state of affairs but look that is our match preview what scoreline are you going for 2-1 Leicester yeah I mean I went the same in my in the predict the prem um I think look it's really really downhearting it's really really depressing uh, the way things are going at Tottenham at the moment and you know with the rumors about Nuno Espirito Santos as well you know he got just announced that he's leaving Wolves at the end of the season and now the bookies have completely slashed the odds on him to be the next Tottenham manager and that does not fill me with any sort of confidence as well. But to be honest, I don't know if it's just paper talk because it kind of contradicts everything Daniel Levy said in his uh, programme notes uh, last week. Yeah, because apparently we want, we want someone who will match the Tottenham DNA and I just don't feel like Nuno does that. He's been quite a defensive manager. I know in, in some games they have played good football, uh, um, but by and large, Wolves are very much a team that don't score too many goals and keep it tight at the back. Yeah, but maybe with a bit more quality in the squad, he can change up the way he plays. Maybe that's just because he's at a Wolves team. You say that, Neto, Jimenez, Adama Troyer, Ruben Neves, they've got quality. Yeah, they do have quality, but I'm saying like, their quality is it shouldn't be anywhere near the what we have, what a Man City have, what a Chelsea, you know what I mean? The top six sides in the Premier League. Yeah, potentially. Um, and as well, Raul Jimenez has been out for pretty much the whole season. Yeah, he got injured quite early on, to be fair. But I don't know. I still think he's like, I don't see him as this progressive manager who's going to make us be getting us play good football on a consistent basis and someone to instill confidence. I could be wrong, um, but that's not how I see uh, That's not how I see Nuno. I think he's a fine manager. I do. I don't think he's a bad manager. I just, you know, if we're, if we're getting, ready, getting rid of Mourinho because of the style of football we play, and if that's a big part of the reason, then I don't see how Nuno solves that issue. Do you reckon if Nuno comes, we finally sign? Uh, sign uh, Jao Moutinho yeah finally after years <laughs> and years we'll get Moutinho through the door just like how we got Lorente 10 years too exactly. late um, wouldn't surprise it would be me. classic wouldn't it it, would be it wouldn't so surprise classic. me but look I'm not, obviously not going to start getting on his back immediately if we if he does become the manager but I don't think he's the right fit for us that's mm. just my I'd rather Graham Potter that's my yeah, opinion maybe um, alright well that is your match preview we are both going to 2-1 to Leicester unfortunately let me know your scoreline predictions in the comment section below like subscribe and comment and as always come, come on, on you Spurs, Spurs.